an absolutely mind-blowing day in the world of Magic the Gathering. The One Ring has been found, Lord of the Rings has literally broken Magic the Gathering, and the game is only going to get worse from here. Magic. I am a wizard! History. I'm an old wizard! The Magic Historian. My bones hurt. Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. My friends, I hope the day finds you well because we have gathered for a mega juicy installment of mega magic news. The Lord of the Rings situation is absolutely wild. The frenzy around it, the joy, the gloom and doom, and ultimately the impact that it's gonna have on Magic's future are all hugely off the scale. So, before we talk about what this means for Magic's future, I just want to discuss the actual finding of the One Ring. On the very, very tiny chance that you watch my channel but don't already know, the One Ring has absolutely already been found. In fact, it's already been PSA graded, so it's already in one of those hard cases, and funnily enough, this is like a mint brand new made by Wizards, one out of one card, and guess what it got rated out of 10? It got a 9, not even a 9.5. Now on one hand, the condition of a one out of one card is fairly irrelevant. It's like that one copy of the Post Malone card. There's only one, so it's not like you can say, well, you know what, it's, it's, it's a banged up tin of beans, so you gotta give me a discount. Like, that is not a part of it, but it does speak to the quality concerns of Magic the Gathering that I have had for a long time in that they made a one of one card that they knew was going to be this crazy chase object and they didn't put in the effort to make sure that it was a 10 out of 10. Unless some weird corner case comes out where it turns out that they intentionally made the card a little bit wonky in some ways so that when people made their own proxy and playtest versions, they would look perfect and that would actually be a way you could tell the difference. So it does remain to be seen whether that part is playing into it, but I highly doubt it. Let's be real. When Wizards showed it off in their video, the One Ring was curled and it looked like the glove they were holding it in was dirty. Absolutely insane. So the One Ring gets announced on on Friday. We get a card game store coming out. They're the ones who offered a million dollars saying, we're gonna buy this one ring, but if somebody else wants to make a bigger offer, we've got an email address here that you can contact the individual. Because the person who got the one ring really got their ducks in a row. They said, okay, I'm gonna get this graded. I'm gonna contact a lawyer. It's absolutely amazing. I never would have thought to do these things if I had gotten the one ring, maybe if somebody else told me. And speaking of me getting the one ring, I just have to touch on the absolute insanity of where the one ring was found, friends, because it was found uh, like two hours from where I am. It was literally found in Ontario, Canada, which I was not expecting at all, specifically in Whitby, which is a city two hours from here that's the same size as my city. So there was a theoretical chance that the boxes that made it there could have actually made it to the game store that I go to, and I might have actually opened it up in that live stream when we opened up the game store's packs. Now, it's just crazy to me to think that that would even happen, and even nuttier, out of all the places that the One Ring was gonna surface, I was not expecting for it to surface in Canada, right? That's absolutely crazy. And, as we talked about previously in a video, there are a bunch of people tossing about the whole, well, is the Canadian government gonna get in on this? Is it considered, like, a lottery that's against the law? That sort of thing. Ultimately, I don't think that at all, right? I think most likely what's gonna happen is the government's just gonna come in and be like, so, um, no, 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 we don't care about whatever lottery. No, no, you're just buying game pieces. That's fine, that's fine. So we know you bought a pack of game pieces, right? And you got this super rare game piece and you sold that for a million dollars. Hey, well, great. Where's our delicious cut? Like, that's how that's gonna go. So when it comes to the Canadian government and the One Ring, there's, it's not gonna be seized or forfeited as far as I understand. Maybe in some insane old world that would happen, but I can't see any scenario other than the government going, yo, yo, where's the money, son? Where's the money? So, when the One Ring actually shows up, what happens? You have, a, you have a variety of reactions. You have some people who are like, oh man, I wish it was me. That, I would say, is the biggest level reaction. But there were literally sighs of relief from some people where they're like, Whew, okay, I can stop chasing this. Other people are like, Whew, maybe this will stop being such a big subject of discussion. 
game stores, depending on who they are, got left holding the bag in some ways. I talked to one in specific where he said, yo, guess what happens? These people pre-order these collector booster boxes. The phone is ringing off the hook, ringing off the hook for people asking for these collector boxes. And I keep telling them no. I keep telling them no, because I'm a man of my word. I got these boxes set aside for people, but the people aren't showing up. The day I decide to put these back up and let people buy them, boom. The one ring gets found and now nobody wants them. So that was the initial, like initial reaction. You have to understand that the frenzy around this was absolutely insane. The whipsaw market movements were so quick that if you blinked, you missed it. So it went like this. It gets announced that the one ring has been found and people are like, okay, has it, has it, has it. Wizards of the Coast confirms it's been found. That's when things really start to heat up. You already had people going, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get out. But then you have a stampede. So I didn't get to visually confirm this because things move so quickly. But I have reports that collector booster boxes were being liquidated at $100. The lowest ones you could get for $100. Now those were snapped up really quickly, but people were liquidating at a number of below retail points. But they all got snagged up. And so initially what happened with the One Ring, people asked me, what's gonna happen when it gets found? Are boxes gonna tank or are they just gonna be like fine and not touched at all? And I said my expectation was to see anywhere from a 10 to 20% reduction from the hype prices, but that since the set still has a bunch of desirable things in it, like the um, serial, not, not just the serialized rings, but let's be very clear about this. Lord of the Ring, it, like the, the set has really good card design. There's a lot of desirable cards in there that are fun that people want. So it's not like the Aftermath set that we recently got where nobody wanted it. And if it just has this golden ticket, people are going to buy it. Lord of the Rings has a bunch of genuine demand independent of the One Ring. But the One Ring clearly had a big outsized impact on a number of people. So the first day you have this reaction where there's fire selling and the LGSs are going, oh man, like oh, I'm stuck with this stuff. How am I even gonna get rid of it? But less than 24 hours, it took less than 24 hours. I think it was actually more in the course of 12 hours to be real, where the market went, nope, 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 nope. We're back up to like, not the, the peak price, but we're back up to basically like store prices, retail prices, legitimately. It bounced all the way back up, which is crazy to me. Like, so we are actually sitting in a, in a position where you're looking at a 10 to 20% reduction on the collector booster boxes. But the speed at which this happened is the whole thing about the Lord of the Rings set is actually entirely crazy to me. What it represents, what it means for magic. The One Ring was extremely successful, right? As a marketing gimmick, it was extremely successful. But here's the thing, Lord of the Rings set is the most successful set in Magic's history, as far as I'm concerned. That is how it's going to go down. That's how the numbers are gonna look, because you have to understand from Wizards of the Coast perspective, it's not about cards sold, it's not about boxes sold, it's about dollars made. Lord of the Rings is the most expensive product that has been accepted by the market. So if you want a product that wasn't accepted, Magic 30, where they tried to get $1,000 for all of those gold border back proxy things, right? That was a failure that was roundly rejected by the market. So a few people bought it, Wizards pulled it from sale out of embarrassment in less than 48 hours, waited months to give stores theirs, and then just kind of, whoop, that never even happened. It doesn't exist, right? So that is when the market rejects something. Lord of the Rings is when the market fully embraces it. Look, the fact that the One Ring is gone, the chase ticket is gone, and the box prices have rebounded as fast as they did, that speaks directly to the desirability of the cards in the boxes, right? It can't be based on any, like, what's happening? The people who liquidated were the highest level speculators, stuff like that, mostly, right? And gamblers too. So with those people gone, where's the justification? It just, we're in a crazy situation where Lord of the Rings is so wildly successful that this is fundamentally going to warp how Wizards operates going forwards, right? Like they have to kick a whole bunch of money up to Hasbro. If you guys didn't know, Wizards of the Coast is responsible for about a, a third of the money that Hasbro makes. Like I think that's actually the profits they make. So one out of every $3 Hasbro makes in profit comes straight up from Wizards of the Coast when they have all these other divisions. Wizards has been upgraded to a division of theirs. So they're leaning on them more and more for the money, right? And you can see they're doing the same thing they did with Monopoly where it's like, let's get these other properties in here and mix them up. And Lord of the Rings, honestly, was an incredibly smart choice for this because the fantasy flavor of it 
dovetails perfectly with Magic the Gathering. There is no gap between them, right? The only real difference is, sure, Lord of the Rings doesn't have Planeswalkers, but that's irrelevant. It doesn't even matter, right? It's got the right kind of flavor, the right kind of feel, so you've got that. It's already got a huge fan base outside of Magic, and every universe is beyond successfully brings people in from outside of magic i've seen it happen with a number of different things they brought in walking dead fans they brought in warhammer fans they're pulling in the lord of the ring folks like universe beyond it does function as a product i understand people's complaints about how it's very jarring and outside the world and as a flavor boy i feel the same way you do it feels very strange to sum it up like earth level characters check it out this is rick from the zombie apocalypse and you're just like I mean, okay, I guess it's a little bit strange, but, you know, obviously we've gotten away from just being weirded out by the Universes Beyond just for that. But the problem is, is that Universes Beyond are going to, more and more as we go forward, be treated like the only thing that matters. And if you want an example of what I'm talking about, take a look at what we're dealing with just in this recent little period of time. You have the Lord of the Rings set, banger, amazing, but that's Universes Beyond. Over here, we've got Aftermath. Ooh. What's Aftermath? Well, Aftermath is leftover garbage. Aftermath looks like a set that was carved off the main set where they're trying to scam us to pay a whole bunch of money for less. They put in less work on the story. They put in less work on every part of it for the original set that it was from, March of the Machine. And then they peeled some of it off, peeled off some of the story one. It's an entire separate set. That's how they're treating their properties. They don't care if their stories are so inconsistent that Ren literally falls on the ground and then someone catches her midair in a story they wrote. Like, they do not care at all about the consistency of their own internal properties. And the problem with that is, is that's what built magic. And universes beyond can only do so much. What's the next big property that will actually merge with magic that they can do a one of that will be as popular and well known as the One Ring? My theory is there's nothing. Anything you say that's big enough, they're never going to do Harry Potter. That would have been Strixhaven. Anything that's owned by Disney is a no-go because Disney's doing Lorcana. So forget get any kind of marvel crossovers like any big properties you can think of are off limits so there's nowhere to go in that regard but the money has to flow more money has to come in and it will get greedier from here don't fool yourself into thinking that wizards will go oh the next universe is beyond we'll price it the same they will move the price up like they do with everything look at the next master set we're getting right look at the next reprint set that we're getting it's coming out in like a month and it's more expensive and they're just going to keep moving it up the chain but this one right here has succeeded massively it's poured a ton of money into hasbro's coffers directly after in world aftermath didn't so we have the regular worlds of magic struggling to dump money buckets and we have worlds outside of magic dumping money buckets the people at the top of hasbro are going to go do more universes beyond and we already know from talking from like rosewater talking saying yo yo we're actually got a lot more universes beyond you haven't even seen most of it so far but it's going to be amped up even further because nothing has been this successful the most successful set in Magic the Gathering history is now Lord of the Rings. And the way they judge everything is on sales. Why do you think that Kamigawa got reskinned as a cyberpunk set instead of actually going back to the real Kamigawa? Because the original Kamigawa sold so poorly, wizards wouldn't touch the world for decades. The same thing happened with Lorwyn. Lorwyn is a great world, but guess what? Lorwyn didn't sell well enough. It only matters what numbers are on the spreadsheet at the end of the day. Why do you think we went Zendikar, 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 Ravnica, 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 Innistrad, 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 Innistrad. There was three, the last time we did Innistrad, they did three Innistrads crammed together. Not as like, oh, it's just, that's the level we're at right now where they're going, okay, the stuff we make ourselves barely matters that's what it feels like and the universe beyond stuff is what we're going to focus on and as far as i'm concerned that's going to lead to the end of the game you can't turn magic into monopoly and you can't fool us by making regular premiere releases that you put no effort into they refuse to put effort into sets that don't cost crazy amounts of money, which is insane because they're already printing money to an absurd degree. You can go and buy board games that come with stacks of cards in them all this for like 40 bucks, but Wizards of the Coast just keeps 
cranking up the prices and it's going to go more insane from here. Magic 30 was their letter to us that they plan to gouge us as hard as humanly possible. They thought that we would happily pay $1,000 for packs of proxies. Nothing has changed. And look at the price point. That was $1,000 for that box. They're already selling these collector boxes, at least in Canada, for over $500. Things are about to get crazy. You wait until we hit 2024. Mid-2024 is going to be so insane. Mark your calendars. Come back and tell me I'm right. I'm saying it for a fact. Stuff is about to get absolutely wild. Aftermath plus Lord of the Rings equals management saying, forget our stuff, we're full on universes beyond. That's how I see it, and that is really, really bad for the health of the game, especially since those sets are designed to force cards into all kinds of different formats to get you to buy them and shake things up and force rotation into everything. So, my friends, that wraps up everything I have to say about that. I'll be doing a live stream over on my other channel, Hatcher, tonight. If you want to come by and hang out, you're welcome to do so. Big thank you to all of my patrons for supporting my channel. You guys rule, and I will see you all in the next video.